Hello folks, today is Friday, May 14th, 2021. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. We got quite a bit to talk about, so let's just jump right in. The first story has to do with the PlayStation 5, and yep, you're still gonna have a hard time getting your hands on one if you've missed out. As you probably know, if you've looked at any YouTube comment section or anywhere on the internet, uh, the PlayStation 5 launch has been plagued with uh, low availability and lots of scalpers. And it seems like that's not going to change because according to PlayStation himself, as reported by Bloomberg, during a businessy type call on the record, uh, Sony's CFO warned analysts that, that we are going to continue seeing limited availability and shortages of PS5 through 20 2022. That is rough, and that is, of course, uh, a perfect storm of a bunch of uh, problems, mainly because of the pandemic and, and all, all the shortages that have racked basically the whole tech industry. Sony did also state here uh, that they understand that many people, a lot of their base is still on PlayStation 4, so expect that to still have a lot of legs. Uh, I still think, as of right now, we still know that the next Horizon game is releasing on PS4 and PS5, so I think that's good, especially considering a lot of people that want this damn console can't get their hands on it. But on the flip side of this, more of like the sunshine and rainbows side, uh, Wired did a great interview uh, kind of looking back at six months of PS5 with head of PlayStation Studios, Herman Hulst, and he said that there are 25 titles in development for PlayStation 5 with about half of those being new IP or new intellectual property, meaning not sequels. So that's something to look forward to, at least by the time people who want PS5 will get their hands on one, they'll maybe have plenty of games to catch up on. I just wonder if maybe Sony's gonna kind of still continue to keep things kind of slow and not throw out a bunch of games on PS5 right away, considering availability is still kind of short. Sony also this week, in case you missed it, uh, announced two new controllers, uh, two new DualSense controllers, a slick a black one and a really cool red one. I'm not usually a red controller, type of guy, but I like the way this one looks. Next up, something we want to share with you guys. Uh, sometimes we try and share cool new graphics technology when we discover it online. Uh, this is an incredible video uh, breaking down uh, sort of photorealism enhancement technology applied in this case specifically to Grand Theft Auto V. Now, this is very much just kind of more of a study. It's it's more of a, a scholarly exploration than anything right now. And the video, which we will link in the description down below, explains it, although it, it, it's pretty rough stuff. Actually, one of the top comments I'm gonna read, it says, I understood absolutely nothing, but it looks great. And that is the case here because what this is essentially doing in layman's terms, as someone who is not very smart, it's almost like deep faking uh, real time over video game graphics where the technology is in real time analyzing what is going on on screen, in this case, the game playing, uh, and it is applying real world photos over a lot of what you see in the game, making it still very much the same game, the same place, but looking way more realistic. It's almost eerie at times. It's clearly not perfect, but it can be pretty stunning. And it's almost like the actual phrase photorealistic because it is referencing real world photos. It's super cool. Like I said, if you wanna check that out, that'll be linked down in the description below. Now, the next story we wanna talk about is Ubisoft. You probably read the headlines uh, recently this week that Ubisoft is abandoning AAA games forever. That's not totally the case. You gotta read past the headline, but this news story is pretty interesting if you like to pay attention to the industry. So Ubisoft has got on record saying that moving forward, uh, they are going to emphasize releasing budget free to play versions and spin-offs of some of their biggest franchises. So that could mean anything. We could be seeing a free to play Splinter Cell game or you know, a free to play Far Cry game or something like that where they try to continue to experiment with this model and figure out how to get big games in players' hands for free, but while also getting money from them still. How's it not a Far Cry Battle Royale yet? Far Cradle, Far Cradle, Far Cry Roy, Far Cry, Far Cradle, Far 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 Cradle Far Royale, Far Royale. Oh my god! That for a lot of gamers, you hear that, and it's really disappointing. It's like read the room, man. Ugh. Uh, but they're also following the money. They're following the trends, uh, especially with mobile gaming being one of the biggest markets. It sucks. Ubisoft gonna Ubisoft, but a lot of people read that as that they are totally turning their back on regular tr traditional AAA development, and um, that seems to not be the case because they did clarify that they are still very much invested in making those regular experiences, which per I kind of expect them to do, but I'll say only with a grain of salt because it's a company, they're gonna put out a statement, actions really speak louder than any 
PR statement. They said they are not reducing their AAA output, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. Now, a lot of you guys probably know I was clearly raised by television. As a kid, my favorite thing ever was Saturday morning cartoons and a big old bowl of sugary cereal. I've kind of grown up since then, but our new sponsor, Magic Spoon, has helped bring the magic back. This Better For You cereal accurately captures the feel of the good old days of over-the-top sugary cereal, but you don't have to feel bad about eating it. Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. It's only 140 calories. It doesn't taste fake, it's great. I know it tastes good because I am famous for eating my cereal without milk and everybody hates me for it. No, wait, where are you going? They have all the good classic flavors. They have cocoa, frosted, fruity, and peanut butter, and I really like combining the cocoa and the peanut butter, you know what I'm saying? But with all that, the most important thing, like I said, it tastes great. Uh, they also have a 100% happiness guarantee where if you're not satisfied, you can get a refund. So click the link in the description to grab a variety pack and try it out today. Uh, you can also use the promo code at checkout, GameRanks, for $5 off your order or go to magicspoon.com slash gamericks. And thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring our videos. Also, in other news, Xbox has kind of been ramping up their anniversary celebration, 20 years of Xbox, and they released a uh, dashboard theme that is the original Xbox. Like, I'm talking like the big OG Xbox. It's kind of cool, just figured we'd share. Uh, we've had a lot of PlayStation news this week, so yeah, kind of cool. Now we got some stuff, some videos and stuff linked in the description below for you to check out in case you missed anything throughout the week. Uh, the first is the launch trailer for the Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, Wrath of the Druids expansion. It's pretty substantial stuff. It seems so far that people are liking it. I bounced off of AC Valhalla hard. I still find myself just being one of those old school Assassin's Creed fans, but that's out this week, as well as, of course, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I've been playing that. I've been having a ton of fun with it. We put out a Before You Buy video for it. Uh, the first game got the biggest overhaul, but they all seem like, it just seems like a pretty good package. So if you wanna watch our full video, my full thoughts, it'll be linked down there in the description. I will just say straight up, like I don't think we're gonna have a tr game trilogy like that again uh, for some time. It's just perfect sci-fi. So if you've never played it, I think now's the time. Also, also, if you are looking for a laugh, uh, we've shouted them out before. I don't think they need our help, but highly recommend checking out the new highlight reel video. Uh, there are some insane Resident Evil Village mods <laughs> that made me like, we legit were laughing our ass off just before this. Also, Dying Light 2 and Techland, they're, they're keeping it 100. They put out another kind of developer style, ask me anything type video. Did I really just say keeping it 100? So if you are like us here, still scrounging for info for that, uh, putting out another video, so check that out. Also, linked in the description, if you've been watching this show for years, you know I try and recommend long reads and articles and stuff every so often, just because we spend so much time talking about video games here, we should be well read on them. So uh, this week, I can definitely recommend Jason Schreier's new book, Press Reset. It's similar to his previous book, where it, it, every chapter kind of focuses on a, a different game, a different development studio, uh, but this time it focuses a little bit more on the human element and how rough it can be to make games where you have to bounce from one studio to another to another, but there's some really interesting stories there uh, about some legendary developers, uh, some newer game studios, and it, it's just cool to learn stuff. So if you like learning, highly recommend the book. Soapbox over, it's linked down in the description below, but uh, in other news, let's talk VR for a second. Uh, HTC is doing another Vive, and and once again, it is phenomenally priced and essentially not for your average consumer. Shout out to Ars Technica for, for basically outlining how uh, this new announcement wraps up what Vive and HTC were trying to do with home VR and now going full enterprise because the new Vive Focus 3 is, is essentially a high-end VR device design and feature-wise similar to something like the Oculus Quest 2, but uh, it also costs $1,300. So it's interesting to see uh, that they continue to move more towards enterprise stuff and VR arcade experiences and company experiences and less consumer, uh, considering other companies like, whether you like it or not, Facebook and Oculus, kind of have it a little bit more on lock. Uh, but in other news, something to look forward to is we got a, a little bit more uh, trickle of PlayStation VR 2 news. PlayStation has slowly been trickling out some information for us. Uh, we've gotten a good substantial look at the new control controllers, uh, some of the tech behind some of the PSVR, uh, but now uh, we've gotten this new report. Uh, it is, of course, from inside sources, so it's not officially from Sony yet, but Upload VR is reporting a substantial increase in resolution, a 2000 by 2040 per eye, different lens work and some good tech going on, and also the fact that there may be a haptic feedback style motor within the headset itself, which could be pretty interesting. Expect this, obviously, beyond 2021, especially coupled with the story we talked about earlier with PlayStation 
PlayStation 5 shortages. But in terms of home VR, console VR, I, I think this is pretty exciting considering the original PSVR did pretty well. Also, hey, uh, in other news, uh, the famous Japanese horror game series Fatal Frame is returning. Can you believe it? It's returning as a pachinko slot style game. It's just a slot machine digital thing. Yep, so in celebration of like the anniversary of Fatal Frame, uh, this, is this is what they're doing in Japan. It's essentially kind of like a revitalization rework of the original game. I hope maybe this means that eventually maybe they will do something with a game, but I'm also one of those people that saw that the, they did the pachinko slot Metal Gear Solid 3 in, in, the, in the Fox engine and I was hoping that they would actually make that into a game and they, they never have, they never will. Anyway, I digress, what do we got? Uh, good news, uh, Ghost Runner is getting a sequel. Uh, the developers behind the awesome sci-fi kind of parkour free running action game has signed a deal with 505 to make a follow-up Ghost Runner game. So that's something to look forward to, especially uh, I thought that was very good on PC. So if you're on PC, you can look at something good. Uh, highly recommend the first one and it's nice to know that another one might eventually be around the corner. But something else I'm looking forward to, if we were talking about uh, Japanese companies, Sega has said that they are they are building something big, man. They are working on something. I can't help but get excited about this. I know it's just a company talking shit, but Sega has said that it has plans to release what they are calling a super game within the next five years. It, apparently they're spending a sub substantial amount of years on this new intellectual property, a new IP, just a big, massive Sega game. What could it be? What could the idea be? What could the universe be? What could anything about it, the gameplay be? How could it be so good that Sega has internally decided to commit five years of working on it and tons and tons of money and their reputation? It could be anything. I know a lot of people saying like, what if it's just Sonic and they just make a crazy awesome Sonic game? I know it seems like it's gonna be new IP, but what if they're lying and they're just making an awesome Sonic game? I don't know. I'm gonna stop fan theorizing here. Uh, I do wanna talk about all the gaming news that we've talked about this week, but the biggest thing I do wanna hear from you is what do you think Sega's up to? What if it's a spiritual successor and they combine some of their best shit like um, uh, Jet Set Radio, Sonic the Hedgehog, Crazy Taxi, Seaman, and they just they just make one weird new crazy game. I don't, I'm going crazy. But I wanna know what you guys think Sega is up to, as well as the whole PlayStation 5 shortage thing. Are you ready for the long war ahead? Maybe you're an Xbox person or a Nintendo person, maybe. Whatever you are, I wanna hear what you think about that news, about what you're playing this weekend, whether it's something new like the Assassin's Creed expansion or Mass Effect Legendary or Resident Evil Village or uh, something older. Let's talk. Anything about the news down in the comments, definitely let us us know we'll be down there but things get a little crazy so if you want to yell at me directly of course you can always find me on twitter and instagram at jake baldino and youtube.com slash jake baldino but thank you guys for coming around getting caught up on the news clicking the like button helps us out a lot we would really genuinely appreciate that but i always say it if you're new consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell because we put out videos every single day but i'm jake baldino you can find me here every friday you can find me doing those before you buy videos thanks for watching pizza's on me